Hey there, Calc Kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today we're going to look in on how to use slope fields and take it to another level with our reasoning of what is happening with a function or with a curve. So to start us off, let's take a look. We talked about this in our last lesson a little bit. Now we're going to officially do that, and that is looking at particular solutions. So we have this 1 minus x, y graph, this weird thing here. We, we did this one actually in the last lesson. We're going to plot a point 0, 2 and label it as point A. So 0, 2 goes right here. We're going to label it as point A, but before I label it, let's sketch it first. So we're going to sketch it. Sketch literally means sketch. It's not going to be exact. We're just trying to get a little bit of a feel for what does the curve uh, look like according to the slope field. So remember, it's like a current, a leaf that's in the current of a river. We drop a leaf right here, and what does the current do? It looks like it pushes it down. If we go to the left, it pushes it down like this, and then it starts to flatten out and looks something like this. That was really squiggly and not very nice and smooth. And then this side, it looks like it goes up and then has some type of maximum where it turns around and then comes down here and flattens out there with an asymptote and it goes that direction. Okay, now that I've sketched it, I'm going to label it point A. I didn't want to label it point A before because it might have uh, I might have been writing A right in the middle of where I was trying to draw it. Okay, so there is a particular solution for this slope field that goes through that point 0, 2. And again, it's just a brief sketch. Let's just do it again. Negative 1, negative 2 for, is our point B. So negative 1, negative 2 right there. In fact, let's use a different color. There we go. Now that can stand out for us a little bit that it's the different one. And we're following the slope curve like the current of a river. And it seemed, the slope field seems to push us this way. So there's the asymptote again. And then it looks like there's a maximum that goes right around here not maximum, I mean minimum, and then it curves off and makes another asymptote. And again, that's just a sketch. We label that point B. And so you'll practice that in today's lesson, sketching just from the slope field if we just pick a random point. Could you get an idea of what that sketch looks like? Now, if you're on the website, you could go under the video, scroll down, and you could look on flipmath.com for the calculus website. For this lesson, 7.4, you'll see this applet thing here, uh, and I'm going to type in 1 minus xy to match our graph that we just created. And then you could plot the solution point A and move it and just double check yourself. So that's what the graph would look like. And then point B, whoa, where's point B? Oh, right there. And then drag that down to negative 1, negative 2. And again, there's the, the one that, that matches what we drew. So again, this is just to let you play around with it a little bit, see if what you drew was correct. You would obviously not have something like that on the AP exam, you're not gonna be able to refer to something like this, but it's just to check and see if what you did is even close. And our next problem, let's do number two here. Now we're talking about finding from a slope field, finding the equation that matches the actual solution. So before in our lessons, we were looking for the differential equation that matches. Now we're looking for the solution to that differential equation. That's the difference. So this is the particular solution that goes through the point 0, 0. So I'm going to plot where's 0, 0? Right there. So it looks to be like that. If I follow that curve, that would be like a minimum, something that looks like this. And it looks like I have some type of vertical asymptote right there because there's no graph. So I'm going to type a vertical asymptote. So that's the general shape of the graph. I have something else going on over here. I don't have enough to see. And sometimes that'll happen. But it looks like it's something that would be curving down like that. So which one of these graphs would match that. And this is where you have to have the knowledge of your family of functions or just some general understanding of what's going on with functions. Here, I'm going to show you why C does not work. 0, 0. So if I type in a 0 into the x, well, that's going to equal 0 to the e to the second power, and that is definitely not 0. So I can say, OK, it can't be C because it doesn't even go through that point 0, 0. That's easy enough. Next up, how about we focus in on this uh, this vertical asymptote. If it's a vertical asymptote, that means x plus 2 is a factor in the denominator. Okay, so we have a 2 plus x right there, which is x plus 2, so it could be that one. We have a 2 plus x right there, it could be that one. And then we have, if we factor this, this is going to have an x plus 2 and an x minus 2, if we factor that. So it does have an x plus 2, but this part of it, this x minus 2, well, that means that we'd have to have a vertical asymptote right there. Right? And it doesn't. There's no vertical asymptote. So that's definitely not A. So now we're down to B and D. And B, if you look at tangent of x, tangent x is one of those graphs. Even It's in the numerator, so I don't have to worry about the denominator part of that one. Tangent x has tons of vertical asymptotes. It would look like this, where it's over and over and over again. You remember that tangent graph? 
So it does something like that. Oh, I curved back around. So there's lots and lots of, because why? Because sine over cosine, every time that cosine is zero, cosine, every time that cosine is zero on bottom, you're gonna have a vertical asymptote. So that's why tangent X does not look like this. So that leaves us down to D. So a lot of times it is process of elimination unless there's more things going on with asymptotes. Maybe you'll have more asymptotes vertical or even a horizontal asymptote that you could pick out. I'm gonna graph it on my calculator just to double check that D is the right answer. So there's my function, my Y1 and graph it. And I get this weird looking graph, which is nice. That does match, I'm gonna drag this over here. That does match up with what I have drawn here. So that's pretty good. It's where I have the asymptote right there at x equals negative two. Okay, so just let me clarify something. When you see problems like this, you have to pay attention. Is it asking for the solution or is it asking for the differential equation? So don't make the mistake of trying to plug in coordinate points to figure out the slope. These, this A, B, C, D stuff, this wasn't the slope. These aren't differential equations. So don't get that confused. I will give you both of those types of problems in this practice because you have to get used to which one is it asking for and can you pick it out. So with these, it's just recognizing the general shape and no, having some knowledge of families of functions. Next up, number three. This is a problem that would be on a free response portion of the AP exam. A lot of kids miss these problems. In fact, I'd say the majority of kids will miss this type of problem, but it's really not that hard. And it's so sad when kids miss it. So we're gonna have the differential equation here. And here's our slope field of it. And it's just saying, let's describe the points for which the derivative equals negative one. When does this differential equation equal negative one? I'm gonna show you on this graph, if we looked, where does the slope field represent negative one? I'm gonna circle it, it's right here. And you go ahead and circle it too. It is this diagonal line. You can, can you see it there? Negative one, negative one, negative one slope. That's what the slope is. Sometimes the graphs are not as easy to pick out. You just can't look at it and know. So what I'm gonna show you is you can just take dy dx, which is x plus one over y, and just say, when does it equal negative one? And we solve this, multiply both sides by y, x plus one equals negative y, uh, and then, now divide everything by negative one. That's probably the best. So then we go, y would then equal, because we're dividing everything by negative one, negative x minus one. So this line is negative x minus one. So describe all the points. It's all points that fall on the line y equals negative x minus one. Those are the, that's the answer to this problem. All the points that fall on the line y equals negative x minus one are the ones where dy dx equals negative one. So that's how you do this. So the slope field definitely helps because then you can just see it. Oh yeah, that's where all the slopes are negative one. But it's actually more algebra to be able to solve this problem. Okay, last thing, and that is these problems, this is another example of what might be on a free response portion of the AP exam, so they're good to practice. And that is, why does this not match? Why does the dy dt here, this differential equation, why does it not match this graph? Because it's really close. Look here, we have a negative 0 0.3, right? So if all of these are negative, no matter what y value I plug in, right? If let's just say, I'm gonna plug in a y value of three. Well, that would mean that dy dt would equal negative 0 0.9, right? If I plug that in. So right here at three, all the way across here would, that would have to be a slope of negative 0.9. Every single y value should be exactly the same slope across that line there when y equals three. But they're not, they're changing. And if you look at it every, see there's no x, right? Or I could say t, because it's dy dt. There's no other variable except for y. So all across the, the y values should be exactly the same slope, and they're not, they're changing. So there's lots of ways you could give the answer to this. Here's the one that I have for this one, and that is one possible answer could be that if you say y equals zero, then dy dt has to also equal zero, right? Plug in a zero, you get zero. So however, in the slope field, these the slope fields of the line segments right here at y equals zero, all across here on the, the t axis, I should say, those are non-zero. Look at them. They're negative, negative, negative. They're not zero they would have to equal zero. So that's one way of talking about uh, why this slope field does not match this dy dt.
So for this lesson, again, what did we do? We took slope fields and we're, we're taking it one more level where we're using it to reason some things that are happening with the curve. What's going on with this curve and what are some of the particular solutions for it? Okay, rock that master check and I'll see you back in our next lesson.